Welcome to Real Estate Coaching Radio, America's number one trusted resource for realtors who demand authentic, real-time coaching. Starring award-winning real estate coaches Tim and Julie Harris. Get ready for unfiltered, full-strength honesty about what is truly working to get you into action and make you money in this new real estate boom. Now to our hosts, Tim and Julie Harris. And welcome back to Real Estate Coaching Radio. Tim and Julie Harris broadcasting live from a very rainy and dreary Austin, Texas. So, Julie, welcome back to today's radio show. (laughs) Julie? Oh, boy, I have to unmute Julie. Sorry, my fault. So, guys, uh, the topic today is why most agents absolutely positively fear closing. There you are. You're on, right? Yes, I think I am. Good. You are. We can hear you. So why most agents fear closing. And the fear manifests itself in many different ways. And so what we're going to do is we're breaking today's radio show into three parts today. First of all, we're going to give you a short uh, quiz. Don't worry, you didn't need to study for this quiz to determine whether or not you indeed fear closing. The second uh, second thing we're going to do is we're going to tell you how that fear is manifesting. In other words, how that allowing that fear to remain in your life is actually resulting in um, you not becoming a listing agent, you not closing on enough sellers, you not making the amount of money that you deserve to make. And then the last part of today's radio show is we're going to tell you exactly what you can do to get over that fear. So, Julie, before I get to the uh, notes for today's radio show, any interesting stories from our coaches' coaching calls or from your own coaching calls you'd like to share with the listeners? Yes, one of the most common things that we're seeing right now, and it's a good thing, although for some agents it doesn't always feel that way, many of our listeners and our coaching clients and our coaches' coaching clients are experiencing a higher level of closings than they ever have, mostly as a result of having more listing inventory than they ever have and getting better at actually winning their buyer contract. So more closings. So some of these agents are having two or three closings in one day. They've never dealt with that before. Some of them are having eight or nine closings in a month on up from there that is new to them. So the two things that we're working on you know, via the coaches and our own clients are, number one, let's make this the new reality and not just a fluky big month, that you can handle that volume and you can do it consistently. That's number one. And number two is how can you do that and it, with your time management. So the number one skill that seems to be working with these agents, hi, handling the higher volume of closings, is to touch their files. Even if you have a transaction coordinator, to touch each file for a few minutes a day. Maybe you've got 12 or 15 deals pending, and that seems like, oh my gosh, i got all these deals stacking up on my desk, which will cause you to not be in momentum converting new deals because it feels like this avalanche of closings. Again, nice problem to have. But instead of looking at it as, well, I've got to set aside next week to get through all my files and see what's going on at the expense of everything else going on to keep you in momentum next month, just touch the files. Look at what's going on. Talk to the people involved. Talk to your transaction coordinator, each file, for a little bit every day. You can spend less than an hour a day making sure you're on top of it and giving yourself peace of mind so that you don't self-sabotage into not having a great month next month and the month after it because you're using all these closings as an excuse. This is a major leap into more business maturity for these up-and-coming top producers, Tim. And I know you see this as well, is the ability to deal with lots of pendings and still do your lead follow-up, still do your prospecting, still get you know, your marketing to your past clients out there, even though you've got a lot going on. Does that make sense? That absolutely does. And, you know, it, this all goes back to it, – it's interesting. Julie was giving you a very practical way to approach the problem – but really the essence of this is it really is truly a mindset issue. Um, mm-hmm. Sometimes agents will sabotage themselves because of the fact that they are having more success than they've ever had before, making more money than they've ever made before, maybe even making more money than anyone they know. So as a result of that, it puts them in a place where they just start to deal with a lot of very deep-rooted uh, mindset issues about all kinds of things. Like our, you know, some of you will say, Am I, is, is this success me? Am I comfortable making this much money? Am I comfortable having this level of whatever? And those are the types of things that a great coach is going to help you figure out. Sometimes your lack of cash flow 
or as we lovingly call it, your cash spurts, where you just make money now mm-hmm. and then, that doesn't have really anything to do with the market. It has nothing to do with interest rates. It has nothing to do with really anything other than what's going on between your ears. It's your mindset and your willingness to accept the fact that we are in a fantastic housing market. It's going to be this way for the next seven to ten years. And why not make this the best ten years of your entire real estate career? Why not use this opportunity to pay off all your debt, to become a multimillionaire, to live the life of your dreams, not just for you, you know, for your family, and maybe for your your children's families. Maybe you can create legacy wealth as a result of shifting your mindset towards abundance and away from scarcity. And guys, we talked about that on a previous radio show. And remember, you can go to Real Estate Coaching Radio anytime and listen to all of our previous radio shows. There's literally hundreds of them on there, and a lot of them do deal directly with this issue, which is mindset. But we're going to make we're going to have a very practical call. You guys always like these a radio show today. And so, what I want you to do is I want you to answer these three questions. It's very simple. Yeah, a lot of you listen to us on your mobiles as you're driving and whatnot, so you can just take this test. You don't have to write anything down. You didn't need to study for it. Okay? So here's, again, the topic of today's call, radio show, is why do most agents fear closing? So I want you to take this test. Do you mainly work with buyers? Don't say what I'm focusing on is what I want to work on, what I'm hoping to do. When you look at your closed transactions for the last month, for the last year, for the last however long, is a greater percent buyers or sellers, right? So if it's a greater percent buyers or sellers, just mentally remember that. Only three quick questions. Next question I wrote down, and this is to um, answer the question for you, is if you fear closing, is when you are working with those buyers, do you find yourself showing more than three or four homes total before they purchase a home? In other words, are you one of these agents that basically is providing a, a free concierge drive around service? You become a limo service for all these buyers. You're showing houses, uh, house after house, weekend after weekend. Are you showing more than three or four houses before you buy, or, buy a contract? The answer is yes or it's no. So mentally remember that one. And then the last question I wrote down is the listings, that, assuming you've had listings before, and a lot of our coaching clients have had dozens and dozens. But think where your listings have come from. Do your listings mostly come from centers of influence and past clients? Mostly come from the people you know at church? Mostly come from your family members and your friends? Where of the listings you've had, where do they prominently come from? So if the answer is yes, that they prominently come from your centers of influence and past clients, you have a fear of closing. If your buyers are demanding or you're ending up showing them more than three or four houses, you do have indeed a problem and a fear with closing. And if your business is prominently buyers and not sellers, guess what? You also have a definite fear of closing. Now, the question is, is why do most agents, and again, our primary focus is making you guys into great listing agents. As you know, you have to list the last. The richest of the rich agents in this industry are always listing agents, always will be listing agents. When you have listings, you have leverage. Julie and I can talk about the merits of uh, focusing on listings until the cows come home, which given the fact that we're in central Texas, it could be a matter of minutes. They're <laughs> but, out but there. The of, yeah, they're out there. <laughs> but the reality of it is, hey, Julie, you know we should tell them about the guy what? who owns all the land behind, behind, our, behind our, oh uh, our land, behind our river. We should tell them what that guy... So there's this guy, guys, that has this um, above our ridge. It's difficult to describe where we live, but just envision this, okay? So the guy with behind us has this big parcel. He's like generationally wealthy. His family's been in Texas forever. This guy has a pet llama. No big deal, right? But he also has a pet zebra, and he also has a pet camel. camel. And, camel. and a longhorn, okay? One of those big, massive cows. So this guy's pets are a longhorn a camel, a zebra, and uh, a lot. Yeah, you guys got it. Isn't that? Yeah. Anyway, there's Texas for you. I'm all thinking right, about so, how to keep all their, what do you feed, like z- zebra kibble and, and cam- camel kibble? How do you keep all their food straight? I don't know. I don't know either. But the, the funny part is they're all friends. That's the funny part. Yeah. These big, huge <laughs> critters are all kind of, and in Texas, like I said, people have, animal, like we are used to having dogs and cats and maybe gerbils and hamsters and fish. In Texas, they have zebras. <laughs> on the way to Costco, no less. Yeah, you're right. All right, so anyway, uh, so you now know that you probably have a fear of closing. You now know that you have to be focusing primarily on becoming a listing agent. There's something that Julie said. Julie, buyers, I want you to explain this to him. This is a quote mm-hmm. from Julie. Buyers are mostly physical work and sellers are mostly mental work. Uh, tell them about what you meant by that. 
Well, so buyers, you literally have physical labor involved, driving around, fiddling with lock boxes, setting up showings, slugging. I mean, the stories that we hear, you know, dealing with the uh, the Rottweiler in the backyard, it's physical labor. You guys are out there in the thick of it, okay? And let's be honest, once you actually show a house that shows better than the rest, doesn't it kind of sell itself? I mean, assuming you've got a buyer that's pretty well motivated and you're showing in the right price range, there's always a house that shines more than the rest. So for the most part, the labor is dragging them around showing property, which is what you guys all complain about. Oh, I couldn't do it's anything low else because I had to show, you know, I had to show 12 houses so I couldn't do anything else. Yeah, it's low skill because how hard is it if somebody actually wants to buy? Not really, if we're being honest, okay? So listing is mental labor because it does take more skill. You do have to use your scripts, your presentation skills. You actually have to go there and tell them what makes you different versus anybody else they're talking to. Whether that's the agent that sold them the house or the person that's been postcarding them to death while they live there, it doesn't matter. You have a larger possibility of hearing the word no. That's why it's mental labor. It actually is mentally harder to work with sellers. And that is also why every agent you know is not a strong listing agent because it takes more. It takes more specific skill. It takes coaching. It takes learning. It takes practice. It takes role play. And really, Tim, to bring it back home to our topic today, it takes the ability to ask for the business and risk hearing no. And then if you do hear no, finding out why and doing something about it, it actually takes mental work. So, Julie, what is closing? What is our definition of closing? Well, technically, and this is where some agents get into trouble on this, closing is a logical ending to a great presentation. Now, let's look at what that says. If you don't have a great presentation, you're always going to have trouble closing because it's the logical ending to a great presentation. So again, we get back to mental labor. That's why you got to develop your pre-listing package, your listing presentation, objection handling, and the ability to actually ask for business. Because here's the thing that's kind of cool knowing that that's the definition. When you do have a great presentation, closing is easy because it totally makes sense. You got to end the presentation somehow. But if you don't have a great presentation, or maybe you don't have any presentation at all, these are the agents who walk out the seller's door saying, great meeting with you, thanks for your time, I'll follow up. That's not closing. That's just getting the heck out of there because you ran out of steam and you didn't have a presentation or anything really to present and talk about. Does that make sense, Tim? I mean, maybe Absolutely. I'm being hard on them so, about this. but No, 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 this is great. So let's drill down on what Julie means as far as, let's start with, Obviously, let's assume that you have a seller lead. You pre-qualify the seller lead. When you're asking, guys, remember, these are what we're talking about now is why you fear closing. You fear closing, if you listen to what Julie just said, because of the fact that you're walking into listing presentations not having done your job. In other words, you haven't pre-qualified that seller, so you don't know their motivation. You haven't uh, had conversations with that seller to ascertain really uh, what their ideal price is. You haven't used the script that we give all of our coaching clients as far as what questions to ask and which order to ask them so that when you get to that seller's house, there are no surprises. There are no shocks. There are no reasons to have fear and trepidation. Furthermore, you absolutely positively, even after you've pre-qualified them, you've had a nice natural conversation, you've essentially had the answer to all the big questions already out of the way, you absolutely positively have to send them a pre-listing pack. The pre-listing pack, when you use our pre-listing pack, guys, it answers all the big questions, and even some maybe the sellers had not thought of yet. It answers the uh, commission question. It answers the marketing question. It answers the big fearful question that agents really do live in fear of hearing, why should I list with you? All of you agents do the same thing. I mean, isn't that very question, isn't that question the question that prevents many of uh, you from becoming listing agents? or those of you who are listing agents and you're just listing with your centers of influence and friends and family that's preventing you from actually deciding to become uh, a bigger scale listing agent by going after the business of people that don't know you because ultimately you do not know how to answer the question of why should I list with you? All you agents are the same. They say those words to you. The point of, uh, and you know that question is coming your way. They'll either ask it directly, they'll ask it indirectly, but you're going to have to overcome it. Not if you use our pre-listing pack. 
the pre-listing pack answers their question about communication. You're going to show them a communication guarantee. It answers their question about the term of the listing. It answers the question about commission. It answers the question about what you're going to do to get the property sold. Every single question that a seller could ever ask you during a listing presentation must be answered before you get there. Otherwise, you're walking into the lion's den. You're walking into a situation where you're, they're going to ask you a question. Even the nicest people are going to ask you questions, and you're going to be put back on your heels, and you're going to have to do a fancy two-step. You're going to have to BS them, right? You know what I'm talking about. If you've been on a listing presentation and you weren't prepared, you maybe even were successful at it a few times. But if you want to go to the next level, you have to be using a pre-listing pack that answers all the seller's questions prior to you getting there, Right? It is critical that you do that. Otherwise, you have no, especially after listening to this radio show, oh, especially for all of you who are our coaching clients, if you're not using the pre-listing pack as prescribed, then and you don't take a listing, you have no one to blame but yourself. You cannot blame the seller in that situation. You have to take, you have to own that failure yourself. Um, so next thing is when you walk into a house, after you, sent, after you pre-qualified, after you set the uh, pre-listing pack, then you have a listing presentation. Again, guys, use our listing presentation. Oftentimes, if you use our listing presentation, the entire listing appointment is about 30 minutes long. It's simple. When they've read the pre-listing pack, you've already overcame all the objections. You've already answered their questions. They already know what to expect. They already are grateful, frankly, that you've removed the tension from the meeting having answered all their questions ahead of time. We have heard at this point count hundreds of times agents that are brand new, really, frankly, maybe don't even really have any idea what they're doing when they're listing properties. They're learning on the job, as all of us do, right? So what's happening is they're using our pre-listing pack, and they're taking listings away from seasoned agents because the pre-listing pack does the selling for them. Julie, am I overstating this? You have experience, well, no, I'm sure, uh, dozens of Absolutely. The thing is, gosh, I don't know why you wouldn't do it, knowing that it makes it so much easier you know, especially, I mean, I guess I, especially for anyone, really, but I'm thinking about agents that live in fear of objections, and they know that that's going to throw them and make them nervous if they get any objections, which is related to their inability to close, because when you try to close, that's when you get objections, right? So the pre-listing package handles those questions, okay, because what's the definition of an objection? It's an unanswered question in the mind of the prospect. So if you answer all of their questions before you get there, how much easier is your presentation when you get there? Basically, you go over price, answer a few more questions, and close. But if you show up cold, and I'm thinking of several clients that are in the process of getting their pre-listing packages together. And so if you compare that to how most agents behave, I hear everything from, well, you know, I did a really great job on follow-up, and they heard from me every week, so I just assumed that it was mine. Okay, so, well, that doesn't mean that there weren't two other agents doing the same thing, and one of them's their best friend, and the other one sold them the house in the first place. Exactly. So how are you expecting it to be yours if you don't all have all of your facts straight? So this really ties into a bigger issue, I think, Tim, which is pre-appointment preparation and knowing your facts before you get there. So sometimes agents won't send a pre-listing package because they're afraid that that's too aggressive, and yet, they're calling it a listing presentation in their mind. You know what I'm saying? So oh, it's absolutely. almost like, well, I don't want to call it what it is because I might hear no back to the closing issue, right? So by working on becoming a better closer, it forces you to actually work on other skills so that you'll have the confidence to ask for the business. So our pre review for all of you, the pre-listing pack that we ask all of you to use it, we've already created it for you. Uh, coaching clients, I'm really speaking directly to you at this point. It's done. Just copy it. Don't re-engineer it. Don't rethink it. Don't format it a different way. Don't use different colors. Don't use different fonts. Just copy the pre-listing pack with your personal information on it. Don't re-engineer it. It is a huge Can't mistake. Really make it any easier. <laughs> the pre right. The pre-listing pack has been proven to work in every market and every price range in even different countries. So it works. Use it. Just copy it. It'll make your life so much easier. Um, the next thing is, is when you're the, the mindset again that you have to decide that you're going to deal with is, are you really closing when you're going on a listing appointment? If you have done your preparation ahead of time, if you have 
and now our pre-listing pack, it's the pre-listing pack, okay, which is in a folder, a bunch of different pages. We also ask that in the pre-listing pack, you literally put your CMA. On the CMA, you put a price range. You go essentially uh, a little bit less than market, a little bit higher than market. And then, yes, granted, pricing in a lot of markets is uh, tough, so you want to give it a good range. Don't make the don't put the actual suggested price because you haven't seen the house yet. It could actually be nicer or not as nice as what you're thinking. And also the other thing is don't put an exact price on your CMA uh, because another agent could come in there and just tell the seller a higher number and just buy the listing from out underneath you, right? So give them a price range. And the other thing, we talked about this on the radio show I think yesterday or the day before, is we want you to give them – a net sheet that shows different scenarios, a low, med- you, know, you know, basically three different scenarios where the house could sell. One would be like the dream price. Another would be probably right in line with market. And one would be like below market. Again, we explained this on a previous radio show. I, what are we doing by doing that? We are removing the tension. They are seeing what the numbers are. You do not have to have a, you know, a fisticuffs with the seller over price or over commission. All the numbers are in front of them. The CMA is there. The net sheet is there. And then the other thing we want you to include, and some of you use digital signatures, I know, and if you do, then, you know, frankly, I'd prefer that you print it off or use your board uh, listing forms, but I want you to send over the listing paperwork as well. You can fill it out with all their information and just leave the price off of it. So, And do put the commission on there. Whatever your market commission is, put that on there. Send all that over ahead of time. Why? Because then they have an opportunity to read the net sheet, to read your listing paperwork, to read the everything. And when you get there, none of that tension is there. There's no surprises. There's no anything. It's actually fun to go on a listing appointment when you follow their process. So here's a little another thing. A lot of you guys don't know how to handle yourselves when you're asked a tough question. So here's, a, uh, again, this is a mindset thing. Ask yourself this question now, right? Who is in control, the person asking the question or the person answering the question? Asking or answering, who's in control? When you're in a listing situation and the seller is the one doing all the asking of the questions, they're in control. So when you get a question that you're not comfortable with or that you realize might just be a little bit you know, edgy and you want to take a breath back, here's what you do. So if someone says to you, for example, you know, uh, Julie, are you going to advertise my house on XYZ website? If opposed to saying, which most of you will do, you'll go one of two ways. You'll say, well, of course. We're going to put it on every other website, even though you don't normally. Or the, uh, an agent might go the opposite direction and explain to the seller why the website's stupid and how they shouldn't be doing that and how it's crazy. In other words, you're trying to make the seller wrong. Neither of those strategies are very smart, but here's the strategy that you should follow. Mr. Seller, thank you for asking that question. I'm curious, remember who's in control, the asker of the question or the answer of the question. So Mr. Seller, I'm curious, why, is it, uh, why do you think it's important to have your home on that website? See what they tell you. And here's what they're going to say nine times out of ten. Well, the other agent that I interviewed t- said it was. Hmm, interesting. Well, why? So then you can get into what the seller's thinking. You can use that strategy for anything. If they ask you anything, are you going to stage the house? Or are you going to this or that or the other, right? Upper end price ranges, the seller's always going to try to get you guys to pay for a whole bunch of stuff that you shouldn't be paying for. Well, so for example, are you going to be doing, <laughs> this is for all of our clients in L.A., are you going to be doing a big party to celebrate the listing like they do on all the Bravo TV shows? And right. that isn't normal. That just happens on, in reality TV. It doesn't <laughs> normally happen in the real real estate market. And you say this, Mr. Seller, I really appreciate you asking that question. I actually get that quite often. Let me ask you, why do you think it's important that we do a, a big party when we put your house for sale? And then listen to what they say. And if you can see it's something that's really important to them, then you're going to throw a big party. If it's something that they just don't even care about, that you ask them, so, well, you know, the other agent said that we should do it, and that, well, what do you think about that, Mr. Seller? Well, frankly, I don't want a bunch of strangers uh, tromping through my house. I only want to have pre-qualified people go through my house. Exactly. And that's my policy as well. You guys get it? This strategy, when, uh, when you're confronted with questions that make you uncomfortable, works for anything. Are you going to be providing drone photography over my house? I know some of you guys are getting that now. And then the question will be, you know, Mr. Seller, I appreciate you asking that question. Thanks for that. I'm curious, why do you think drone photography, this is assuming you don't, right? Why do you, why do you um, think that drone photography will benefit your house? 
well, you know, the other realtor said it'll show this, that, and the other. Well, Mr. Seller, that's true, but what, it, it would, you know, expose the property. You would, you know, see a lot more than you normally would if you just drove in the driveway. What do you think about that? Well, I'm worried about the fact that they're also going to see that two streets over from a drone that, that there's a busy road or there's a chicken farm, you know, right. So, Mr. Seller, I agree. So that's how you basically make it so that you don't have to live in fear of being asked questions that put you back on your heels when you're meeting with sellers. You acknowledge their question, you even praise their question, and then you pivot and you ask them a question. Some of you are going to be uncomfortable with that. You can say something else like, you know, Julie, I really appreciate you asking that question, and I'll answer that in just a second. But I'm curious, why do you think that's important to, for the sake of selling your home? So you're acknowledging it, you're praising them, and then you're asking a question of them, and then you're in control again. So that is a strategy that will get you guys out of a lot of sticky thoughts. Okay, and the last thing I wrote down is why does a closing create tension? I think, Julie, we've already hammered that one, right? It's mm -hmm. because they're not prepared and haven't overcome the questions prior to the actual listing appointment. True? Yeah, absolutely. I would agree with that. Definitely. Um, you know, so lack, what's the saying? Uh, proper previous planning prevents pitifully poor performance. Did you guys write so, that down? Julie, now you, know, now you guys say it ten times fast. <laughs> I don't know if I can do it fast. <laughs> proper previous planning prevents... Pitifully poor performance. Well, I so can't say it once, so you win. I know. So to me, pitifully poor performance in a listing presentation is, number one, not going in with all of your facts, not sending a pre-listing package, and then not closing. These things are all related. That's pitifully poor performance, not asking questions, right? My favorite way to teach the question thing, Tim, it's always open houses because that always comes up in a listing presentation. And that can right. be kind of a black hole, right? So you have to ask them what their opinion is on open houses, because they may be just testing you out. You need to ask them what their opinion is. We all assume that every seller wants open houses. You'll be surprised about 50% of the time they'll talk themselves out of it because they just read an article in the paper about how somebody was ripped off at an open house or something, which gets you out of it. Or it could be the opposite. They could be just absolutely addicted to going to open houses. They fully expect it from you, and you'll lose the listing if you don't agree to it. Without asking the question, you don't really know how to answer it, do you? And what most Thus agents are they taught don't to do, yeah. and what most mm -hmm. agents are taught to do, is when asked a question of something, they're just supposed to talk the seller out of the open house. Oh, open house! Mm -hmm. You don't qualify the buyers. All the normal things, and then you've gone through your long diatribe and why open houses are just stupid. And then what happens is they say, "Well, guess what? We bought this house. I have an open house. How do you recover oh, from oh that?" My gosh. Yeah. <laughs> bye. You don't. Have a nice right, afternoon. Bye. -bye. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> So you yeah, always so ask questions you, for crying out loud. Ask questions easier and when they ask you questions. Exactly, but this goes for expensive advertising that some of you guys get suckered into paying. This goes for uh, you know offering uh, unmarketable, basically commissions that are too low, especially to a co-op. This goes to all the types of objections. But again, guys, the fear of closing that a lot of you have manifests itself in the fact that you're only working with buyers. Manifests itself, and even with the buyers you're working with, you're showing them too many houses. Manifests itself that when you do take a listing, it's because your mom decided to list her house with you, not because you're actually competing, not because you're actually producing value for prospective sellers in the marketplace because you offer a unique set of services. That's what skill is all about. That's what pre-listing packs are all about. That's what knowing how to, frankly, price the house correctly for this market is all about. If there's anything we can do for you, what are you supposed to do? As hundreds of you do now, request a free coaching call at freecoachingcallsforagents.com. Freecoachingcallsforagents.com. Remember, we are now offering student loans. So a lot of you have wanted to join our highest level coaching program, the Breakthrough Coaching Program, but you haven't been able to afford it. I get it. So guess what we're doing? You now can get student loans. So they, assuming you get the student loan, you will uh, not have to pay $997 for the Breakthrough Coaching Program, which is our highest level program, but it's only uh, $359. So to learn more about that, go to freecoachingcallsforagents.com. And remember, when you request a free coaching call, we are going to give you free copies of Think and Grow Rich for Real Estate and the Real Estate Treasure Map. Those books are for sale on Amazon, but we're going to give you the books for free just for having requested a free coaching call. So what is better than that? Guys, we have... Hopefully you can see obvious passion for what we're doing, obvious passion for helping you make the most of, these real, of this incredible real estate market. If you're struggling, if you're not feeling that the winds are at your back right now, 
if this is not turning out to be your best year ever in real estate, please ask for help. A lot of you um, are realizing now, probably about, if we're being honest, a year too late, that indeed this is an incredible real estate market. But it's not too late for you to turn it around. The ship hasn't totally left the, the dock yet, but it's starting to leave. You need to take action on this. Otherwise, what you're going to see is the markets that you wanted to go after, the neighborhoods that you wanted to dominate, the skill set that you need to develop. It's already too late because the competitors have gotten their acts together, and it's too late for you to really step in. You'll at best be the best of the rest. You'll never be one of the best if you wait. So please, guys, ask for help, and hopefully we can help you. Free coaching calls for agents.com. These aren't just you know, flaky five-minute coaching calls. Some of our free coaching calls last up to 90 minutes. You will leave with A, the uh, two free books, and B, with an actual plan of action that will hopefully get you going in the right direction. Have a fantastic day, and for the rest of the week, your um, host is Julie Harris because I'm doing some traveling this week. So look forward to Julie presenting to you guys for the rest of the week. Have a fantastic week. This program has been a presentation by Tim and Julie Harris, Real Estate Coaching. For more information on our real estate coaching and training programs, visit our website at timandjulieharris.com. Remember to tune in weekdays at noon for upcoming shows. And until next time, thank you for listening to Real Estate Coaching Radio with Tim and Julie Harris.